Hey guys, welcome back. Doing a little bit of, there's this little bug flying around in here. Doing a little bit of bike maintenance. So yesterday's ride, I noticed a lot of, a lot of creaking and cracking as I was like cranking down on the pedals. And um, my first troubleshoot is gonna be to just take apart the headset, clean that, make sure there's not any bunch of junk in there. Um, put some grease in there, tighten it back down, put it all back together and stuff like that. It's gonna be step one. So basically what I've had here, I've got the Roscoe 9 here on the stand. I'm um, already pre-removed the um, handlebar and fork. So I've got it kind of resting here. Um, this is kind of a challenging thing to do sometimes because the wheel wants to move, but you also wanna be mindful of your brake lines so you don't get a kink. So best to, to take the fork off, take the brake off. I didn't want to fuss with all that, so I'm kind of like not best practice doing it here. So let's take a look at the headset. So this bike is a little bit unique um, than any of the other bikes that I've had to this point, meaning it's got sealed bearings from the get-go, so not something that I typically find. I don't know why this isn't just a standard this is so much better, it's easier, it's easy to maintain, it's not that much more money. Add $20 to the price tag, and I'll pay, gladly play, pay that to get a sealed headset. Another difference is, you'll notice that there's no, there's no cup. This is an integrated headset, so there's no need for cups. Take a look at the bottom. The bearing is in there. Look how dirty that is, so. That could be some of the potential issue that I'm having with the creaking. Get that dirt out of there. It's been a wet spring. Um, I've been riding the trails whenever they're open. They haven't been green very much this season yet. I've had a lot of yellow days. And you know, typically if you go riding right when they turn yellow, they're still a little bit wet. So just recently last night, cleaned off the frame. I went and did a thorough job, kind of getting the little cracks in the crevices, trying to get the most of the dirt out. Um, it did take a quick rag to the wheel, uh, wiped off the chain, wiped off the cranks, wiped off the frame, did the under underside here, the undercarriage, and then just kind of gave it an overall quick spit shine. Because when the bike isn't like super muddy, you can take a, a microfiber, kind of knock off some of the, the loose stuff, and then use this Dawn power wash. It doesn't matter which one, you can get the blue one, the green one, the clear one. This one I just happened to find on closeout at Kroger. I think it was like a buck 50, so I bought all of them. Um, so I have plenty of supply for that. Um, it works good, it foams up, gives you a nice lubrication so you can get the harder uh, get off stuff. So the caked on film, you can just get it, soak it, let it sit for a sec and then wipe it off. And it you know, does a good job getting the bike clean without having to break out the hose and the bucket and all that stuff. So that's a spit shine because I did post that walk around video yesterday and the bike was in very poor condition. It was pretty dirty. Um, kind of a shame to have put a video out like that where the, the bike was dirty. But on the other hand, it's nice to see, hey, I'm actually out here riding bikes. I'm not just showing you. There's a bike on one of the groups that I'm in. I follow a lot of groups. I follow budget bike groups, Trek groups, Roscoe group, Marlin group, Axum group, Walmart group, Ozark group, all these groups. There's a bike out there and you might know which one I'm talking about. Somebody's always posting pictures of it and it's so pristine. It's in such good clean condition. There's probably not a single micro scratch on this bike. So I'm not that guy. I'm not just building these bikes and you know acquiring these bikes to hold on to them and preserve them. I'm actually out here using them as intended, riding them hard, getting them dirty. Um, so that's kind of just a little quick sidebar. Let's get back to the main point. So the top t top headset cup <clears throat> or bearing, you just kind of pull these out. So a quick review from the headset video. I've got a couple of headset videos out there. This is just a two piece thing. You got your bearing that sits in there and then your top washer or compression cap that goes that way. On top of that, we then have our dust cap and then the fork comes through here. In my particular case, I have two spacers that go on top. And I keep losing them. Two there, stem goes on, and then I've got an additional spacer at the top um, that you could move down to bring your bars up if you wanted to. This position feels pretty good for me, so I'm gonna keep it 
the way that it was, but this is your opportunity to, you know, switch things up. If you want to take it and slam it all the way down, you can. You can bring these spacers up above, whatever you want to do. So for our purposes here today, what we're trying to do, the goal is to get, identify if this is our, our creaking issue. So you can see there, there's not a whole bunch of grease in there. It's pretty dry. There's a little bit of liquid. Um, it could be just from water getting in there. So I'm gonna take my microfiber, I'm gonna take these out. Find yourself a clean spot, it doesn't have to be perfect. Get up in there, give it a quick wipe down. <clears throat> you can see there, I don't know if that's dirt or if it's actually like scuffed on the aluminum. Once this wears out, or if this wears out for whatever reason, I don't know if it would. I've never had a, a, a bike like this long term enough to know if this will actually like start to wear out. But with uh, semi integrated headsets, you got removable cups. So if your cup gets damaged for whatever reason, you punch it out and put in a new one. This one, the frame might be toast. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Um, this is something that, you know, I don't really know too much about this. So grab your trusty grease of your choice. I've been using this part tool grease. This came in a four ounce squeeze tube and I've been using the same one for like three years and I'm not stingy with it. So get yourself a little pea size, maybe a couple dabs of pea size amounts in there. Grab your finger, don't be shy. Just rub it around in there. Just a thin layer of grease will do ya. Okay, did. This bug, man, it is flying in my eyes. It's hovering in front of my face. It's currently caught in my eyelash, I think. I don't know. Can you guys see it? I don't know if he's still in there. All right, so basically, separate, separate your thing out and just get in there with your, there's a little bit of grease, kind of, well, it's very light amount there. Just clean it off. Make sure there's no grit and dirt and stuff like that. And it doesn't have to be clean enough to eat off of. Just, just give it a quick wipe down with your microfiber. A quick wipe. And then from here, we can throw it back in. You can throw some grease on here. I'm not going to put any on the bottom because there's already grease in the cup. Again, you can take this part off, set it to the side, actually get it on top of there. A little bit just give it something to have a little bit less friction right you're steering you want it to be nice and smooth so then you replace that top compression cap and we'll do the same thing on the bottom and we'll dig this guy out this is like super terrible this is really dirty in here yeah there's a lot of gunk in there so there is more grease on the bottom which is nice to see, because um, this is where a lot of your water's gonna come in. As you can see, a lot of mud has gotten into there and it's been you know, saturated a little bit. As you can tell, like the grease is kind of thinned out. It's been watered down a little bit. So now we're good. That looks pretty clean. We'll go back over to the bike and we'll wipe out the uh, cup. And this could be our uh, suspect for that creaking sound. There was a lot of dirt, a lot of grit in there. Um, always a good idea to once in a while, take a look at this stuff. Don't neglect it. It's super easy to do. Is the fork. And if you look at that, it's a little bit gross too. So we're gonna take that race and kind of clean that up, clean up the steer tube, apply a little bit more grease to it fresh grease and then uh, go from there. All right, so I got that part cleaned up. It looks nice and fresh. Again, I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on there because metal on metal helps pre uh, preserve it, keeps it nice and running smoothly. So now that that's all greased up, we can start putting it back together. The bottom bearing's in, top bearing is in, the top race, ugh, compression cap is in. Um, you could take this opportunity to kind of get the little edges 
where you might have over greased onto the actual frame because once you put the top cap on there, it doesn't really matter, but you know, if you have an issue with OCD like I do. To do it like this, this isn't a best practice, especially with hydraulic lines, because if these get a kink, it will impact the feeling of your brakes. It's also a good idea to get yourself like some sort of strap or something, just to give you an extra set of hands when you're doing this stuff, because sometimes it is a real pain if you don't take the wheel off and take the brake off and all that. So got my dust cap, two spacers. I like to line up my dust cap logos to where they're facing outwards. I had one spacer on the top and then your top cap. So you should always have a bit of space in between the stem cap and the steer tube underneath. Then you just take your compression cap and twist it until you kind of feel with your hand here, this other hand, my left hand holding it up, you can kind of feel it kind of pulling itself in. That's the whole idea. This doesn't have to be super tight. If this is super tight, your steering is going to be super tight and it's not going to flow as freely. You don't want to crush those bearings. You just want to compress them against the top and the bottom, bring everything together nice and tight so there's no gap, there's no play, there's no movement. So I usually do uh, about finger tight. It says on there, typically it will say on there your uh, uh, torque spec. So this is four newton meter max. So that's about, it's about that much. So I'll bring it down out of the stand. And before you tighten those bolts on the side, Again, first step, make sure that you're straight, right? Make sure your bars are lining up. And I'm usually pretty close, but there's... this is where we're gonna check for if we compressed it enough. So you can get an idea of if there's still play in that headset by feeling it. Sometimes you get a false movement. It's your fork, lock it out if you have the option. This fork locks out pretty nicely. It's pretty darn rigid. And then just rock your bike back and forth. And if you feel any like movement it's like super small but if you feel any movement at all that means that you probably need to tighten it just a little bit more check it again feel solid again move it side to side make sure it moves smooth and free you don't want it to be hard to push uh, in either direction so at this point i'm pretty straight double check it before you tighten down those pinch bolts i like to do one side at a time by the the key method, you turn it until you can't turn it anymore with just your fingertips and then you alternate both sides until you can't do that, until you can't get it to move anymore. Then I'd use the, the leverage method. I put the other end in and I pull it with one finger up until I can't pull it anymore. Same thing on the other side and alternate. You don't want it to be unbalanced torque on these um, pinch bolts. You want it to be evenly applying pressure at both points. So it feels good. I'll put my fork back up. I'm gonna pedal it out here just a bit and see if the noise is gone. I think we might be good. So I think that's gonna be it for this one. Like, comment, subscribe, thumbs down, thumbs up, whatever you want. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.